Okay, we are going to do this example problem here, and the purpose of it is to find the deflection at A. Point A is over here. The bending stiffness is given. And if we think about this problem, we can see that it's a simply supported beam in this region, and then we're going to have a straight line in the region between A and B because that portion of the beam is completely unloaded. We always set up our problems so that we're all on the same page where X is measured as zero at the far left end. So I want to stick with that methodology even though there are ways to do this problem in a simpler manner. But let's stick with this value of x being zero. So when we do the shear and bending moment diagrams, I've given the reactions pretty straightforward. The shear diagram, what we go up 60, down, up 60 again. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to write the equation for v using y equals mx plus b, and then we're going to write the equation for m by simply integrating it. We know that the slope of this, the slope is what? The slope, of course, is negative 15 because we have 15 kips per foot as the uniformly distributed load. And we've done this type of problem over and over again, so it's quite straightforward. So um, our equation for V is negative 15x plus B. Our goal is to find B. And we note that at x equals 3, V equals 60. So that's that point right there. I plug that into our expression. I get V is equal to negative 15x plus 105. I integrate that and I get uh, plus C1 at the end. How do I get C1? We note that at x equals 3, m equals 0. I guess I forgot to mention that we know this shear diagram all the time, or all many times, and what does the moment diagram look? Correspondingly, it looks like that, where the, this area is 120, so that is 120. So to, so to find C1, I put in at x equals 3, m equals 0, and I find that C1 is negative 247.5, and that gives us our equation for the moment. So what I want to do is now integrate that two more times, integrate the moment equation two more times, putting the 1 over EI in the front, and we get this polynomial plus C2. And then we get this polynomial plus C2x plus C3. So that's for dy dx and that's for y. It's a simply supported beam and what do we know? We know that at x equals 3, y equals 0, and x equals 11, y equals 0. That's, we're going to put those two boundary conditions into this equation, and we are going to find our C2s and C3s. When we do that, we end up with two equations, two unknowns. We have to solve it. This details how to solve that. You can all do it. You can all solve two equations, two unknowns. And we end up with uh, C2 is 17.5 and C3 is 639.4. So that means we get our equation for dy dx. And what do we want? We want dy dx at x equals 3. Why do we want dy dx at x equals 3? Because we know that if I find the slope at this location, then I can simply extend 
the beam outward like that. And we can get the deflection at A. We put in x equals 3, and we get that dy dx is negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 4th. And that means, notice the slope is negative, which makes sense, because the slope of our line is going like that. That's a negative slope. And we make a, a triangle. So we're making a triangle here. This is, this is this triangle right there, where, you know, this distance is 3. This is y sub a. And so that's this triangle here. And then we use our slope. And we use similar triangles to get that uh, 1.6 times n to the minus 4 over 1 is equal to y sub a over 3. And we get that y sub a is 4.8 times 10 to the minus 4 feet. Let's look at another problem. And I'm going to do it part way, but I'm going to do it. This is a different problem than we normally do in the sense that we are going to use symbols instead of numbers. We usually don't do this, but I'm going to say I'm going to have a load P. This distance is going to be A. That distance is going to be 2A. And this is our standard diving board problem that we've done many times. We know that the deflection of the diving, we have a load at the end of the diving board, and we know the deflection of the diving board is going to look something like that. And our goal will be to find the deflection at x equals 3a. In other words, we're going to find the end deflection here. And we're going to use symbols. So I can look at, this is my free body diagram. I can use the symbols. I can get the reactions, taking, and you can all get the reactions. We end up with that by is 3p, ay is negative 2p, which means that our free body diagram is going to look like this. I have 2p going down, I have 3p going up. And once I have that, I can draw my shear and bending moment diagrams. I go down 2p, over, up 3p, over, down. And then I get this area is negative 2pa. That area is 2pa, which means I can draw my moment diagram. It's going to look, going to look like this. What I'm going to do now is I, uh, in order to do this in the way that we've done in the past, I need to write two equations for the moment diagram. One for x being between 0 and a, and the other for x being between a and 3a. So I have to write the equation of two straight lines. This straight line has an equation of m is equal to minus 2px. That's easy enough to get. Well, how do I know that? Because the slope is negative 2p. Shear is negative 2p. This straight line here, we know the slope is p. So it's going to be px. And then, you know, you can figure it out that the intercept there is negative 3pa. So that gives me the equation, equations of both of those. I'm now going to integrate both of them twice, and I add in the 1 over ei in front of everything, and I get negative px squared plus c1, and then I get this polynomial plus c1x plus c3. I'm calling it c3. Over here, I integrate it once. I get that plus c2, calling it c2. And then I get this polynomial plus c2x plus c4. Then we just need to get the c's, but we have to have, we have four c's, meaning we need four boundary conditions to get the c's. And if we look at it, at the deflection, what do we see? We see at x equals 0, y equals 0. That's an obvious one because we have our, our deflected shape. That's at x equals 0. 
y equals 0 at x equals a, y equals 0. There's another one. So at x equals 0, y equals 0, at x equals a, y equals 0. And then because we have that discontinuity in the moment diagram, we have to note the following, that at x equals a, which is where the discontinuity is, dy dx using the left equation has got to be equal to, to dy dx for the right equation. In other words, the slope of the beam slightly to the left of a and slightly to the right of a is the same. Makes sense. And then we also see that at x equals a, the uh, deflection for the left equation, using the left equation, has got to be equal to the deflection for the right equation. So we can use all of these. Now, if we put in at x equals 0, y equals 0, you can do that. You get in to see 3 equals 0, for instance. And then if I use this one at x equals a, y equals 0, we get that this equation is 0, and then I can solve for c1. I get c1 is pa squared over 3. Okay, the main, we're not going to go through in all the details, uh, and I'm not really that interested. You can take a look at this using boundary condition 3. I can get a C2. I uh, can use boundary condition 4. I get, you know, C4. But the main thing is that the solution simply involves PA squared, PA cubed. Uh, we're getting equations that look like this, PX cubed over 3 plus PA squared X. That is the form of our solution. And the reason I point this out is, is that people have solved these problems in a general manner like this and put the answers into a table. And this is the table that you'll be given for the EIT or the FE exam. And so I want you to learn how to use this table. So if you look, when we look at the equations given in the table, we see things that look awfully similar to um, what we just developed. For instance, for this one, I get uh, PA squared over 6EI times 3X minus A. Same thing. They develop these tables, this table, in the same way we just did the problem that I just described. Okay, so what we're going to do, though, now is we're going to use this table because it actually can save a lot of time. And if I look at this chart, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different lines in the chart. And the figure on the left part tells us what the line is about. So this is a cantilever beam. This is a cantilever beam. This is a cantilever beam. So the first three lines are for cantilever beams. This is a simply supported beam. This is a simply supported beam. This is a simply supported beam. The last three are for simply supported beams. So this is a cantilever beam with a point load. This is a cantilever beam with a uniformly distributed load. This is a cantilever beam with a concentrated moment at the right end. This is a simply supported beam with a point load. This is a simply supported beam with a uniformly distributed load. This is a simply supported beam with a concentrated moment at the right end. If I look for this, this column here, these are the equations. They've used the symbol delta. Delta is the deflection. We use the symbol y instead of delta. So that column gives the delta. This column gives delta max, the maximum deflection. And then this last column gives what they call phi max, or phi in some cases, um, which is a slope. I'll just show you. So in other words, well, uh, let me show you how to do a problem and then we'll go into the details. So suppose I have this problem here. It's a cantilever beam with a point load. And um, our goal is to find the end deflection and the deflection at x equals 4 meters, so right there. So 
we're going to use the charts so that we're required to use the charts. The way to solve a problem like this basically is to list the variables in the equations and um, that are given. So in other words, if I look at this figure here, what do I see? I have P, I have L, I have A, I have B, and those are the things that I need to know in order to solve this particular problem. Other beam, other beam problems will have different quantities, but I'll sort of give it to you like this, you know, you just basically fill in the blanks. P equals, well, it's going to be 8 kilonewtons. A equals, well, A is the distance of the point load, so it's 4 meters. B is the distance between the point load and the end. It's 2 meters. L is the length. It's the sum of those two, which is 6 meters. W naught we don't need for this problem. M naught we don't need. X is the distance to the point of interest. We're going to do the end deflection first. And the distance to the point of interest is, uh, is 6 meters because we want the end deflection. The equation that we're going to use, notice because we want the end deflection, that means that X is bigger than A. If X is bigger than A, X is greater than A, then the equation that we want is this equation. So the equation is going to be that um, delta is equal to PA squared over 6EI times 3X minus A. All we have to do is plug everything in, and we get the value for delta, 0 0.0996 meters, and that positive value means it's down. Okay, so just to point out the different notations, notice the notation is different from what we've been using. For us, in the table, is this, is that we call y the deflection, and we have positive upward. In the table, they use delta for the deflection, and positive is downward. We use dy dx as the slope. They use phi as the slope. Now you might say phi is meant to be an angle, or they show it as an angle, but this, these tables only work for small deflections, which means that for very small values, what do we know? Slope and angle are the same numerically. So theirs may look like an angle, but it's really, you really just use it as a slope, and which is what we call dy dx. Normally, you, we use Q for the distributed load. They use W naught. And then we use Y max. They use delta max. Okay. When we want to do the deflection at 4 meters, then what do we see? Well, X equals 4 meters. All this other stuff is the same. And what does that mean? When X is 4 meters, then X is equal to A, which means we need to use... Um, this equation, when x is equal to a, is slightly different. So in other words, we had x less than or equal to a. There's our equation from the table. So we're using this equation. We plug it in, and we get this for delta. And again, it's positive, meaning down.